I am live now. You are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, Neda is in here and Draping Society Q&A live session today. And sorry about being you know, a little late because Josh had uh, some technical difficulties and he was not be able to turn the camera on with the uh, connected to the computer. So I hope you can make it and not miss today. And uh, if you are here, just say hi. So we go, today we, we have an uh, interesting live session and we're gonna have demos and uh, quite new surprising things and i hope you're gonna enjoy and like it so let me see hello sarah how are you nice to see you here and i want the caramel too no i don't want this one i want the nicer one josh had a kid uh, caramel and uh, candy Yes, yummy. <laughs> Hi, Laura. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, we are all used to the technology cups. Yes, Josh wasn't, so he was kind of freaking out. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I am great. And you? I. I am. I'm great just have a little he headache but uh, that's okay i will probably hi jill i will probably going to ask some uh, from experienced people some help uh, you guys remember that i was having this uh, sickness is going on during the paris and then we return return to la and i kept taking pain medication not the strong ones from the over-the-counter pain medication like Tylenol and Advil for straight three four weeks and I think my body started to become addicted to it or something because yesterday I was like I've been on pain med for a long time and I want to detox it to take it out of my system so last night I decided to not take them and sleep even though I was having some women monthly thing going on. So it's kind of like uh, I was kind of in pain, but I said, just suck it up. You have to take this out of your system. I slept and I had a very hard time, night sleeping because I couldn't sleep. And uh, I woke up with a uh, headache. So I was just telling Josh, this weekend gonna be so hard for you, dude, because I need to not taking Advil and Tylenol, and I don't care how much it's gonna cost me, <laughs> like pain and headaches and this and that. I have to detox this out of my system because of the thing going on. I had a fever, this and that. I was I've been taking it for a very too, a very long time, and I feel like I'm being like getting addicted to it, and I'm so scared of that. So I need to take it out of my system. So if you guys have any uh, good advice to some detox for two or three days, is that going to help me to just wrap myself because I don't like to be dependent on any kind of medication. And this is one of those. So yes, that's what's going on with me. Wow, we have 22 people here today. We have some DCM uh, workshop people uh, online today as well. Welcome, welcome. I'm happy that you guys are joining us as well. And this is a live Q&A session of the Draping Society that we have it on a weekly basis. And sometimes we just talk. And sometimes we just answer questions and some making just a very quicky demo. And today we have a little bit uh, a demo, but I also have a longer one. And this demo will be very helpful for everyone who wants to uh, be able to create some kind of a 
controlled uh, controlled flare circle kind of skirt or half circle but you are controlling where the flare gonna end on your or show on your body this is a very fun one so I am going to share uh, actually a class session from our uh, DCM master class for half an hour after we finish that I am going to do another live a demo uh, first you will know what is the control flare regular control flare is and the demo that I'm gonna show you here after watching half an hour of that uh, demo which is a class uh, session after that I'm going to show you what if you want all the flare start from the side seam going all the way back so the front going to be very flat it's kind of like a 40s 50s silhouette that uh, like a ball gown looks if you know that the front is kind of uh, comes straight and the moment you hit the sides it's have lots of flare without um, pleat so I'm not talking about the pleats on the sides but I'm talking about uh, just the flare starting from the sides and going all the way to the back so this is something that I haven't even uh, showed in the master class but on a demo I want to show so by first watching a basic flare skirt uh, session and on top of that I'm going to show another demo on how you can co even control even further and just give the, all the flares on the sides and toward the back so um, that's that before that I'm going to uh, talk about the, our new project and gonna uh, talk about our new project it's very exciting and I'm I'm sure you're gonna love it I'm sure you're gonna start making uh, this dress for you in in your own version or from following uh, what we are doing and I'm gonna talk about that then I'm gonna go to Facebook group and uh, answer your questions and after that we are starting our uh, demo session so if you have any questions right now regarding what I said just uh, ask me right now other than that I'm gonna start talking about uh, our Debbie dress our new dress is uh, I we called her Debbie and as you remember let me see come over here Debbie Debbie girl oh wow this is very dark very, very light very uh, this is a Debbie dress right that we are going to make and this is the technical drawing of it so basically in the technical drawing you can see uh, the what's in there and uh, how you know it's it's less complicated <laughs> than this you can see but i also am going to teach so since this is a kimono sleeve inspired dress right so I had to talk about show you how you basically do a kimono foundation and some questions came up like isn't it a dolman sleeve dolman and kimono are not same and somebody asked that oh this is a bad thing so I was thinking what if I just make a little sessions about how what is the kimono classical kimono and what is which we are going to do kimono foundation a sleeve kimono sleeve foundation is a torso foundation that you're gonna keep and you can play with it and I'm going to show you how you can play with it to make it for yourself and uh, after this class or whatever you can remake that thing for yourself anyhow you want and 
also dolman sleeve as you see it is little different than this i'm going to talk to you what's the differences and how you can make dolman sleeve as well so i am showing all the drafting techniques and how uh, talking about the differences and how you can play around the variation basically we are talking about the variations and i'm showing to draft the variations as well in a longer version so you can elongate it or in a shorter and uh, how to make it like a kimono sleeve how you make it uh, like a dolman sleeve and i cut it and actually sew a sample piece so you can see how it uh, flows on the body how it looks on the body as well so you will have the good uh, sample pictures of it as well yeah and the bat wing I am going to do this on Jersey. So, uh, yes, that's going to be on Jersey as well. So we're going to have a uh, dolman and kimono sleeve foundation on, um, what was it? Not the Jersey, but woven fabric, not stretchy ones. And the bat wing on the Jersey doesn't matter i'm just going to show a technique you can use the same technique and apply to any of them you want so yes what do you think and uh what else oh we have we have one of the tops back there can you bring her Bring her down a little bit. No, bring her down. Don't. <laughs> oh my God, the people are gonna see you. Okay. So this is our dolman sleeve top. And this is, of course, I just pinned a little uh, the darts. You can take it off and it's gonna be more, uh, you know, I am showing that on the video, but this is basically our dolman sleeve top. It is pretty, very simple, and it's so nice and actually elegant on the body. I love it. And I am going to finish this one as well. So you're gonna have the sewing of this just the top. Okay, I'm putting the zipper in the back and doing the this one before before or after debbie dress but you know it's all gonna come out together out so let me look at any questions if there is here <sighs> that's okay hi hello paula and hello amanda and hello jane okay fiona hi uh i think this is not the name right mm -hmm. <laughs> hi thank you so perfect time my next project i was trying to figure out is this type of sleeve oh great Hey, excited to be in a position to be able to sign up this time around. Really looking forward to getting creative and learning new things. Hi, great. Hello. And look, looks good. I learn something from you every time. Awesome. So, yes, uh, one of the things about I had to tell, tell you, talk to you about uh, kimono or dolman sleeve it is not easy to drape it is easy to drape if you're uh, good with draping if you have a good knowledge and your hands is you know you know to handle it pretty well and you definitely need the arm piece attached to your dress form that can actually go up and down so but drafting it is way easier to do uh, for the this top so i was like instead of draping i am going to show you the easier way which is the drafting and so this is going to happen throughout the year 
if something is easier to make uh, by drafting, I will show you by drafting. If something is easier to make by draping and faster, I'll do it with the draping and show that, that to you. Which means it is opening up a new uh, possibility to make pants and shorts and other stuff as well. We don't have to do everything with the draping because there are some pieces that are way easier to do it by drafting. So we are going to do that. What do you think about this? Do you like the drafting as well? We can do both. And after we are drafting something, we put it together, the muslin piece, and we try the test fit. And we are going, going to go through all of these. I'm going to show you all that. Uh, so, um, good to see you again, Neda. Hi, not able to sign up uh, just now, but I will come back to the Drapey Society later down the line. Yes, hi, good. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this session. How am I feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm good. I'm just like, I've been uh, having this uh, pain medication, but not the opioid one, thanks God, just the Tylenol and Advil, but it's been for too long, for like four weeks almost, since my travel, you know, my vacation in uh, London and Paris, in Paris, I start taking this medication because I was in pain because of the, the, you know, strep throat, this and that, and I've been on it too long, and it's been like two days or something, I'm like, I am, I want to not take this stuff because I feel like if I don't take it, I, I'm going to have pain on my body. So I stopped, I stopped not taking it last night, but I woke up with a very bad headache and I just had to take it again because I was going to do this live session and I was like, I cannot have a bad headache during the session. So, but from after this, tonight, tomorrow, and then weekend, basically I'm going to take off everything and try to detox out of my system because I don't like the feeling that I'm taking it down every day. So it's going to be hard this weekend, <laughs> especially for Arya and Josh. I'm going to say just guys, go get out of the house, go biking and do something. Leave me alone so I can be by myself because I'm going to probably have a very moody and kind of a, uh, you know, tense muscles and stuff. So trying to, trying to figure out, I'm going to like little, uh, ask my doctor, see what I can do to just flush it flush it out and if you have any if you've been good through this and know a good uh, some kind of a good uh, way and just let me know and this is about the drafting yes so I'm glad you like the idea awesome I think it's a great idea okay hi Michelle <laughs> uh, try going to a chiropractor. Uh, I do, I go to the gym for um, weightlifting and I started back again and I'm doing some stretching and I do have some rollers for my back and my neck and this and that. So they are helping a lot. It, those are okay. And uh, it's not a, just, I feel like I need to take the pain medication out because you guys don't know some of you because you're not in the JP society every week I've been talking about what's going on with me and with my uh, week so uh, when I was in Paris I got sick and then that sickness just continued for a long time that I ended up in ER but I'm okay now I'm great but just been too long on a medication so I just have to take it off uh, the system just flush it out Yay. Hi. Hi, Mary Lynch. And chiropractors are very different. I know what is a chiropractor, but I, I've been just once before for my neck. Uh, but um, it's just uh, about something else. But yes, if I find a good uh, one that I can trust and give my body to someone to, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I have to trust that person uh, well because uh, it, it can, everything can go very bad, badly wrong, so. Okay, so guys, uh, I'm gonna just 
have my coffee a little bit and then I'm gonna start answering the questions. There, there are some questions. Milk thistle, what is that? Is it good to detox the liver? Dark chocolate. <laughs> I'll do the dark chocolate <laughs> for sure for the sake of the taking out of my system. <laughs> yes. But uh, I'll check it out. Oh. Josh is showing me this one. So it just is a herbal remedy. Oh. Okay, maybe the tea. Okay. Let me take a look at the questions. See, there is other the herbal remedy yes i think it's a good one can you order it from amazon <laughs> thanks for amazon it's gonna be here in a day hopefully okay i'm gonna go to draping society Okay, where are we? Is that this one? Yeah. Okay. So, ooh, stuff coming out. First, let me ask the, uh, answer the questions. People are posting lots of stuff. That's so fun. Paul as well. <laughs> okay, where is the question? It's right here. Okay, let me answer the questions first, and then I'm gonna take a look at everyone's work. There are 14 comments in here. It was nothing in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't see those questions. Some of them I saw, but ooh. Okay. Paula says milk thistle is very good too. Hmm. I didn't know about this. First time I heard about that. See, I like our community for this kind of things as well. <laughs> because uh, we share the knowledge. Okay. So Nomi asks me, not to ask me, but said something. I can't make it, but we'll watch afterwards. Okay, that'd be nice afterwards because I'm keen to make one of these girls. Hey Naomi, I hope you watch this one and I'm, I'm sure you're going to like it. Uh, the, you, you all already know about the video, but I'm actually adding extra uh, demo today as well. Okay, Alex, I have two questions for you this week. Please, can you give me some constructive criticism? I hope I will help you with regards to my princess lines on my dress form. My second question, first, let's just do that. I have one question first. Okay, uh, Alex, is your shoulders are that straight before the that? Since you are here, let me know. Is your uh, shoulders are that straight when you uh, natural, natural pose? Because that's a very uh, yes. Good. That then you. Uh, you work that if that's the case yes your princess seam looks on the right right place and your shoulder is very then, then your shoulders are very um, actually straight and wide right because I can see this area is probably larger than 11 or 12 centimeters is it Yes. 
This is the halfway through. If a, a, an idea, two cents, okay? If you like to, I have very broad shoulders. Yes, okay, good. If you like to create, you already have a kind of, um, today I'm not, I'm not able to talk. Say <laughs> If you have a triangle body shape, which I kind of see you have that way, and uh, the straight actually creates that little uh, balance, so that's good. I think your princess line and the front is great. I'm gonna see the back. Uh, the only thing in here, you just have to soften it up during the pattern making, okay? Because this one is kind of comes, oh, what was that? How do I go back? Okay, here. Okay, so I see it's kind of like breaking in here, you see? Let's take that break out. Maybe you can make this one a little straight and kind of coming straight, okay? If you do that, that will be kind of more straighter than having this break look, so you won't have that break look. Other than that, it goes down straight nice. Okay. That's the one question, and now to the second question. There is a baseline formula for working out the width of fabrics needed for a three-tier skirt. I know that it depends on the fullness you want to achieve, but is there a minimum ratio? Not really, it's all up to you. For example, the second tier will be exactly one and a half times the first layer, and the third will be double the second. Uh, would that be correct? I don't really know, uh, because I didn't, when I was doing the tiered skirts for my bridal business thing, I didn't do this uh, kind of a skirt before, okay? But the ratio that you're talking about looks like the right one. Let me see in here. It is attached to each other and uh, they are gathered. So let me think, okay? Just a second. So the top part is not gathered at here. This is a little different because in here I don't see any gathering, right? So here is not that gathered as well. It's just a tiny bit little gathering in here. But from down, you basically start having gatherings. But at the down again, this one doesn't have a much gathering on the bottom of this skirt. So it is probably, um, yeah, I will, I'm gonna show you something on, um, I think I have to just teach this. Because I usually make a straight pieces on the pattern and I start adding slashing and opening up and adding uh, the triangle pieces and make it little uh, curve it so at the top the ratio is actually fitting around the circle of the top tier and and whatever the circle of the, the top tier is around here, right? I give about one and a half, maybe, yes, one and a half or maybe two, depends on the gathering you want, and uh, gather it to that point. And the, after having the second tier, you, uh, you have to, again, uh, measure the circle of the bottom of this, the second tier, and double that, right? If you want 
Yes, double that or again go a, 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 about the same amount. Instead of the top, a, instead of top tier doubling it or tripling it, uh, that's, that's what I do. I'm not following any kind of directions that I'm reading from here or there. This is my version. But uh, I do have a pattern making book. So I'm going to take a look at it and actually put, up, put out it for you. It, it's not exactly applying for this type of a tiered skirt because they are attached at the, you know, the one that I have, the, the one I used to make. Uh, they have this kind of a base skirt underneath and we the tiers are attached to the lining not the to each other you know what I mean so I have more information for that but for this I will take a look and find something and put it out uh, out um, on the draping society, draping society website okay i'm gonna or at least just a pdf and then we will see is that good yes okay oh leah ask me something in here you're welcome alex when draping on dress form, sometimes it seems like the dart point may be placed more easily wants to point somewhere other than directly below the apex. With regard to darts that use the apex area as the dart point, is this an example of when the apex position may differ slightly from the actual nipple and where the dart point would really be located in a slightly different location? It seems like in the pattern drafting stage, generally the dart point is moved to be in line with the apex. Yes. Is this always the case for, for, or for some? Is a point other than the apex a better dart point? No. Uh, the dart points uh, should uh, point toward the apex. And the apex are different in every body. Like, um, just because on the dress form the apex is in there, it doesn't mean that it applies to your body shape. So that's why we develop our own bodies and we keep the body's uh, foundation and the torso foundation and keep it as a good um, source to apply to our anything we have. Uh, my dart points are way away from each other than any my dress form so it depends on the positioning of your body uh, your breast and where the apex are located but generally all the uh, darts not all of them <laughs> depends on the darts but usually uh, comes to the apex so they are coming toward the apex right so be because we have different type of darts as if uh, you probably don't know but there are in the other uh, bodies shapes and that we have worked in the master class we have different type of the darts okay but in a general speaking of the regular darts they usually point toward the apex and sometimes when you work on a dress form and the fabric wants to go somewhere else is the because of the grain of the fabric is not laying pro right or the way that you are folding or uh, you know that's probably not uh, something is missing there if you're, the grain of your fabric goes straight and it's your you laid your fabric straight on your body it doesn't have to be exactly pointing the right way, but, but on, a dra on a drafting, when we are taking it to the cleaning and uh, correcting the pattern, we change the direction toward the apex. Is that your question? I'm not 100% sure if that was your question of if, you, if it's something else, can you just simplify it for me? And on the comment section, I can answer you easier make it a little clear for me just a simple and uh, but that's what I on um, what, what I understood from your question I hope I, I was right I you know I understood it right but let me know 
Okay, Janice, I am having a lot of trouble trying to get my bodies right. And I know now the problem is my dress form. I think the breasts need to be filled out more and because I had to put so much stuffing on, I'm struggling to get the princess seam marking in the right place. So my question is how many inches should the princess seam be from the center line? That's I'm stuck in the areas that I can't move forward. I made the body three times and it looks pretty bad. Please help me. Bumo. Uh, Janice, did you uh, check out the measuring yourself uh, videos and it's under the dressmaker's path and uh, the first uh, thing, yes, you have to correct your dress form to your body. So if you go under the dress, uh, dressmaker's path uh, and start from there, uh, it might take a little work, but the, it's going to be very fruitful for you and it's going to make it so much less uh, frustrating because you will have a right vessel to do anything on it okay and um, it's, on level one it's on the level one let's start from there let's start taking off and remake your uh, dress form um, yeah let me see it Yeah, first of all, because I can see there is like, it's not, uh, one thing I see it, Janice, in here, whatever you are using, is it little fluffy type of batting? If that's the case, you have to take it off. Please watch the, I do have a clear video how you can um, make it little, um, firmer the dress form and how you can resize it with the dense uh, batting instead of vadding or instead of the fluffy ones you don't want to use the fluffy ones because that creates a little uh, pillowy shape and you don't want to have a pillowy shape you want to have a very firm base and that is symmetrical okay so under that uh, first uh, level Padding up is level three, but please take a dressmaker's uh, path. Start from the one and just go forward. By the end of that dressmaker's path, I'm 100% sure you're going to feel so much more confident and you're going to have a right vessel and a good base patterns by the end of that. You will have a great base patterns that you can reuse it and use it to make anything from whatever we are making and use them as your base that will correct your shoulder or neckline or your bust point whatever those are those are great 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 assets and just take the time put it in there you will have an amazing base and that will help you ton I have an adjustable dress form, but gaps make it tricky. I'm hoping to pad around the and the gaps and make it to my shape. Would that work? Uh, Lorraine, uh, level one on a dressmaker's path in our draping society has all the answers for you guys. Basically, I have tons of videos and tons of instructions to show you how you can turn your dress form uh, professional or the adjustable doesn't matter you can both turn it into your own body shape and body size and sh uh, also shows you how to tape it how to have to measure it have to uh, pad it how to tape it how to make your base uh, bodices and how to clean them out 
and turn them into a body block. So uh, these are all steps in there. And uh, yeah, you, you, but after, after having that, you can do whatever you want. It just makes it so much easier. Okay? Okay. Yes, she's uh, saying the backside, I can already see that. See, because you are watching it from the picture, this is when also it is, uh, I give these little tips and on the dress, uh, dressmaker's path that you have to take a picture of it and study it and in there that you will know if you have a problem because our eyes deceives us either you have to take a look at it in the mirror and keep it on the in front of mirror and go behind it and look at it in the mirror or take a picture with your phone and print it or put it on your computer little uh, step back and take a look and you'll see all the problems yourself When I made my body, I got my daughter to eyeball front, side, back, side profiles uh, with me standing beside the mannequin and doing face to face and back to back. Uh, is that Janice? Huh? Oh, you need to find that. Okay, find it out. <laughs> I cannot see your name. So I'm trying to see if you're talking about the same thing that again it's a perception like she can see it right she can it's Karen. Karen it's someone else okay uh, taking a picture is is the after doing it taking a picture very straight straight picture not from the top angle not from the low angle very front front angle and uh, when you take a look at the picture on the computer or print it out, just take a look, you'll see. You'll see the problems right away. Okay. I am going to go and look at the people's work. I'm so excited. I'm excited. Oh my God. <laughs> Girl. Look at your face. She's on fire. She's on fire. Besides, look at her face. I can see that satisfaction <laughs> on her face. So, so simple. But look at this. It's kind of cool. I love the fabric as well. And I love that the way it drapes, right? And the other side, straight. It kind of gives a little bit of this design look I love and um, it looks great on you and you made that yourself girl great great work I think if you have it on the striped fabric that will create a very interesting look as well congrats and it looks great on you you look so so great love it and hello what is this Paula tell me about it oh there is a where is the post ah, a few projects I I've been working on also working on a winter riding skirt need to get a picture of it please did few t-shirt dresses for my mom I will get some pictures uh, from her the green shiny shirts were for a CFL game in Nova Scotia with our local team. They were done very quickly with guessing at sizing. Let me see all these. I have so much. <laughs> I have so much fabric. I'm trying to go through it before I buy more. <laughs> I'll do that. I'm doing the same thing. I've started like doing the, all the um, instead of using muslin i start using my fabrics i'm like i need to get rid of this stuff uh, let me look at this yay the 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 people around you are probably like yes paula is making us clothing look at this beautiful 
Nice. I love it. Dazzling. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yay. Tops. Jersey tops. That's great. The dropped shoulder. Awesome. <laughs> Paula, the rest the rest in the town. Great job, Paula. And you're working on this. Ooh, look at this uh, interesting cuts. Hmm, let me see. There's comments on there. I need to see. Beautiful, yes. I, I want to see the end result as well, Paula. Please, please share it, love. I can't wait to see it. Great job. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. And I think, uh, and let me just, so people don't get dizzy when I'm scrolling up. I want to talk about this as well. Look at her. I love this dress on you. I love the color on you with your uh, newly tanned skin. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Very, very summery. The Charlie dress is done. I added more draping across the tummy and lined the top, but not the skirt. What do you think? And how do I, how do you feel about the length? I like the length. If I have enough confidence, please, you, you, you look great in it. I might wear this to a wedding next weekend. I want to, I want you to wear this on next weekend with the gold uh, accessories. Please do. Okay, I, I want a nice necklace or a very big gold earrings. I love the length. It can be maybe about eight centimeters or something shorter. And cut it on the angle, a little bit more angle. So we can, it's, you know, kind of shows off the drape a little bit more. So good. Look at your doggy, so cute. <laughs> Jack, so cute. It's interesting. It is very simple, but it's, it's interesting. So at the moment you see it and it's not gathered. The, when it's not gathered, it is actually more flattering. When it's gathered, it creates a little chunkiness around the waist. This one is not gathered. So that's what I love about the Charlie dress because it creates that interesting of the gathered look from one side that drapes, but this one is flat on the side. So it creates a very nicer and leaner shape. Uh, I love it. <laughs> no, please, please, please. Yes. Accessorize it, wear it confidently because you look great on right look at her face look at her <laughs> smile look at that smile <laughs> i want that smile like a 14 year old girl smile like happy 14s are not but they're 25 maybe <laughs> to 14 my face was always like this all the time but it's a very nice ex um, happy smile i love it and thank you for sharing with us <laughs> Hi. Yeah, you look great. And I love the color. Uh, accessorized with something gold. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah? yeah? Yes. Josh said yes, too. Okay. So, 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 so. There's a question, There's a question in here. Is your blush wedding course still up on your website? Is it? I don't know. Ask Josh. <laughs> Josh does their all the uh, website thing. Are there pre-recorded videos you can just follow along with? Yes, you do have those. For everything we have in our website and in Draping Society. But blush is not on sale right now. But blush is not on sale right now, Josh says. But you can send me an email. Okay. But you can send me an email, he says again. <laughs> Say it a little louder. So. Yeah, but you can send an email, uh, josh at onlinefashionworkshop.com. Say it a little slower. Josh at 
onlinefashionworkshop.com. <laughs> Got it. Paula is leaving. Sad I have to leave. Please go take care of yourself and have a nice hair. Miss my last one because I had a COVID. Oh gosh, so it has been over three months. I, I've been there. Have fun, do something frou frou and uh, enjoy it. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Thank you, Paula. Okay, so are we ready for the session? Wow, we are one hour already in. We're gonna have half an hour video. If you guys don't wanna watch it right now, go have a coffee or something. Uh, this video will be on the draping society with the drape, with draping and the pattern making. I'm not showing the pattern making right now. We are just gonna watch the session of the draping, but the both will be up on the projects. Uh, we are not finishing the whole thing. This is just the way how you drape it and how you turn it into a pattern. And after watching that, after the end of that, I am going to show you another demo right now, live after that. I'm gonna take a break. You watch the video if you like. Huh? What is it about? It's about, okay, sorry. <laughs> the video is about controlled flare, draping controlled flare skirt. And it's from the masterclass. We are sharing it with the Draping Society and it will be up and you can watch it make it anytime you want okay guys so i'll see you soon now we have our fabric ready for the uh, flare skirt and i'm going to show you closely how you can cut in a certain way to control your flare uh, to wear lay on the body as I told you before, I want the most of the flare to be in the back, center back and the back. And the, on the side, I want it to be a little flatter, not having extra flare in here that doesn't stick out or give the extra shape on the side seam. So it kind of keeps it uh, smooth and nice. And two, probably control two flare on the uh, front but not on the one on the center front. One in here and one in here. So let's start. So the first thing you need to do, oh, as you remember, this line that we drew is actually going to be our waistline reference, not our hip line. So we have extra nine inches above the waistline that will use it into helping us to uh, flare it around, to, uh, to control the flare. So the first thing we do, we go, I'm going to lay, align my waistline with the, my drawing. And one in here so I can work around this just like that and actually maybe I'm just gonna pin it like so I can do my center front before I start cutting so the center front is um, attached. Now, the first thing I want you to be pay attention. So the center front is on the straight grain and it's uh, very straight. And I decide to give my first flare, first uh, controlled flare, somewhere before my uh, princess seam somewhere around maybe between or just right here this is the where i want to have my first flare so i just hold here straight i go above my 
waist a little bit and right to that point and I give a little slash just to where I drew and I release that side a little bit and I hold my point and try to hold it here. Maybe I just put a pin right where I want this, okay, to have a control. And I decide how much flare I want, how much I want to give flare. Like when I hold it, do I want this much? I think this much is good. So see, if I want to, I can give a lot of flare here, right? I can have a lot of flare here, but, or I can just have a tad, very small. It's all depend how I move my fabric around, okay? So I control my flare with holding down and decide how much. So I think I want something about, not too much that it kind of falls in the center front. Just this, mm, it has to be starting from here. So maybe this much is enough. Just gonna pin right there. And if you want to have a better control, just pin it here too, so it doesn't move. So it kind of helps you out. And then for my second flare, I decide to go somewhere, maybe a two inches away from it. Maybe an inch and a half, right there. Let me see how much. I am away from that, inch and a half. So I moved inch and a half to here. Maybe I can put a temporary pin right there and cut a little bit more and then cut diagonally and again control how much flare I actually want by holding my where I marked and my holding and see how much flare I want I think I want somewhere around maybe here let's open this one and see how they work together if they look nice together yeah I like that idea I like that much so I'm just gonna pin right after that so I can see how it looks and now going toward the side actually I have a a little distance between my second flare and my side seam almost like a four inches maybe I just move two inches to the side and then uh, give another flare right there so maybe two inches gonna be around here oops see my hand is gonna <laughs> it's kind of tiring because you have to hold your hand with the uh, control so I am adding another another area and I am going to cut straight and little down and then hold the body right there and control my flare again 
I can pin right there one more time I can hold it up and decide how much I want to give my flare and do you see on the side it stays flat now it doesn't look that can be a problem and overall I'm checking my flares and see I just check out all my flares and I see this is how much I like and I will pin on the side seam and let me just put right here and I just keep this straight and check out my flares again this is how yes this is I like this way so I can cut and remove this now and I can actually remove this side the excess to on the side so this is the way it looks I need to pull it out so you can see it better this is how it looks you know it has a nice flare but not too white and I do have a control and the side is actually on kind of flatter look now I am going to draw my lines and after that we're going to do the back and then I'm going to show you how to add lots of flare to the back. So here I do my side and I'm marking my hip line and my waistline. Guys, it is okay to cut close to the waistline, especially in this uh, skirt just try to keep it not passing uh, your waistline because that's going to create a problem as long as your the maximum is hitting the waistline is fine so center front okay now we have our we can remove the side to here now we're gonna do the same thing with our back but this time we are going to play with more flare this time right okay so again this is my waist I'm attaching my waist and down and hip so I don't need to do more than that and just to keep it easier I'm just gonna do this okay so I decide where do I want my flare first flare in the back so I want 
to have a zipper in the center back. If I want a zipper, it's better to not have the flare right in the center back, right? It's good to have a little bit of the space so your zipper lays flat in the center back. So I will go about an inch out. That's where I want to have my flare, first flare at least. And, but keep that area flat at the center back. Okay, so I just have here a pin and I cut my first little above my waist and oh, I just give my first cut in here, remove this and remove this so I can play with my the amount of flare I want to give to this. This time I want to give a little extra like this much yes to create a extra curve I mean extra body and the second one I want another maybe inch or inch and a half away so going to give that and go one more and give another cut and hold it maybe you can pin it right there do not pass the line with the pin and hold it and decide how much flare you want so this one is good this one I want maybe this much this is the amount I like okay now I want to add another one about maybe around here yeah so I cut one more and cut diagonally one more and give as much as I want let me hold it a little bit actually let me hold it like that here let me pin it here I think after pinning I need to cut a little bit more down to be able to create that flare yes maybe just a little bit I want a little bit less it's close to my side I kind of want this much is enough actually yeah now I have to double let me just check it out I have to maybe maybe just need to little release okay you see this flare this this flare right like that I need to double check it because I can't see it I am not in the back it's not toward me okay this one is good now I like to go straight on the side Just going to pin right here and cut this excess and then I'm gonna double check and actually cut this all the way down and I'm gonna attach them together to see how it looks all together just gonna take a look this one looks nice and now I'm going to attach the 
other side. Actually, before that, I need to mark. I need to mark my side seam in this side. And I need another cut in here. Now in here, I can attach them together. at the side seam. And one more here. And this time, you can decide if you like to give extra flare to your bottom of your skirt at all, or just uh, straight. I want to see both way how it looks together. So before I I need to take this back so you can see what I am talking about. So as you see the flare of the skirt is controlled and I do have a flare coming from the front falling like that and the side staying straight and then another fullness in the back by adding lots of flare toward the back right do you see how controlled it's this is so this way you can create your own skirt that has a flare without gathering or without pleating in the waist. It lays straight on the waist and it has a look of the half circle or full circle of skirt. But with the full skirt of skirt, you cannot uh, divide where your flare wants uh, to hit, right? It's divided, it's, uh, you know, placed uh, evenly all around the body so sometimes that uh, does not look good on everybody right sometimes you uh, it it doesn't it's not flattering and this way you can control it I use this method a lot in my bridal and wedding dresses especially 
because most of my dresses are have this uh, very um, flared skirt even the a-lines ones or full skirts one i actually most of them i can control uh, especially if i'm not doing the tool but if i'm draping with the satin or some other kind of uh, fabrics that has a body this way i control where exactly i want to give that fullness without creating tight or you know with the, without the seam you only have side seam and the back seam this way you have more control and it looks nice and the center front can look flat as you see and create this look this is one of the important draping methods in creating flare skirt playing with this is actually very fun and as much as you do you will get a hang uh, of it and you will know what i mean and it will give you a lot of freedom so you don't have to cut everything in half circle or full circle you know or a line to just uh, you know as basic skirts now i need to uh, mark my uh, my final lines so i can turn it into a pattern one more thing with this since with this method obviously as you see your lines are a little different right so the back has this this was our waistline which was our cross grain coming this way down and this one again same way right so uh, probably the side seam is kind of on uh, bias maybe it's not on the full bias but it's kind of a bias before we turn it into a pattern uh, i'm going to turn it in pattern so you can see it but for you before you turn it into a pattern i i want you to keep it hanging on the dress form for overnight when you drape something like this you should hang it at least 24 hours or 12 hours uh, on a dress form or you know if you finish it you can hang it on the hanger and keep it uh, hanging for a while so this way the grain will stretch as much as it needs before you put it together you don't have to do it on muslin because the fabric will be more heavier than the muslin so you can turn this muslin into a pattern first and after turning it into pattern you can cut your actual fabric before you put your side seam together or center back together you let all the pieces hang without folding from the waist down it should be just hanging this way uh, you will have a better chance to not have the ripples or bad uh, like or having uh, some kind of a stretch on your in your seam so this is kind of a goes to the bias uh, sewing in when we are sewing bias clothing yes that's what we are doing most of the time so now let's mark so i'm marking the waist see this one how it dropped now i need to correct that line these are okay but this is yes my new hip line is here so everything else look okay let me get this one as well now it's done now i can remove it and take it to the pattern so 
so I can show you how you can work around this. I don't have time for the <laughs> 24 hours hanging. You can do that before you turn it into a pattern. Now we can turn it into a pattern. So uh, that video will be on the Drapey Society with the pattern making of it, uh, correcting the patterns and everything, and you can reach it anytime you want. Now, again, I'm using the same technique. This time I'm going to show you another example because on that video I'd, uh, I showed how you can give the drape wherever you want around the waist. This time I'm going to keep the center front, this front piece flat. That kind of feels like uh, no gathering or no flare in the front, which is kind of impossible to have it when you are making a circle skirt. When you are cutting the circle skirt, the flare of the circle skirt or half circle skirt divided in natural way around all around the body. So you cannot control where the flare ends up that much, right? And it's uh, divided uh, equally around all around the skirt. But the great thing about this, you're controlling where you want to create those flares. So in this session, in this uh, demo, I'd like to show because I've done this before and I love the look. The front is pr pretty flat on the straight and the flare starts from the side and goes to back. Instead of to giving the little flare in the front and the sides flat and the back, with the flares again, this time going to start the flares from side seams uh, forward. We're not gonna have a side seam. So um, we will talk about how you cut this on when I finish the, the draping. I'm gonna bring it to the table and talk about that on the table. Right now, just have a piece of fabric. Oh my God, here. It's, it's not small, it's big, right? Because I don't know how much flare I'm gonna end up with yet. Give me, okay. And as you see, this is a cross grain of the fabric, and this is the straight grain of fabric. This is the salvage. And I'm going to uh, show you one more thing, and I'm kind of one of planning. I'm not sure if it's going to end up right there, but uh, some references for the where I want to add flares around the waist. So the front, as you see, is kind of a straight. From here, I am starting to add flares to the fabric. Do you have any questions, guys, before I start? You can put it on the comment section so I can see it right now. If not, I'm going to start doing the demo right away. Okay, I don't see any questions before, but if you have any guys, just put it there. I'll take a look at it, okay? So, I kind of going to give about 10 inch or 12 inch above coming down on my salvage of my fabric coming down. And I'm going to pin from here down to my straight, to the center front. So to leveling, that mark that I made. Which was here. And that will be my waist area from where I'm going to start the, my draping. And pinning my center front down from here 
from the waist, maybe a little bit more down to have the, to make sure the grain is standing right, okay? So, from there, I can see this is where I want to have my, the next flare. So from there, I kind of go straight using palm of my hand if my dress form helps me out. It's harder to do it in front of camera because this one takes a little extra hand. So I'm just going, brushing my palm of my hand around the waist to down. And this was the area I'm going to pin right there. As you see, it stays very flat at the front of the skirt. And going to just cut to that point. Yeah, I have a little bit more to here. And remove my, bring it right here. This is, yes, this is exactly where is my mark. And cutting down to my waist a little bit, I pinned it already. And I am going to decide how much flare I like to add to this front line that I have marked. So. I think this is a nice amount. It's pretty big. I like it. I'm gonna give a little bit more flare. Yeah, yeah, okay. So from there, I again keep it, keep the flare and I am going to actually pin the flare so I know it's not moving. Just, just put a little pin right here and move forward. I see the second mark is about an inch or inch and a half away. Gonna go there, another. Snatch another little uh, cut downward and add another flare here. And I need to pin right here as well. Let me just move this one a little bit up. This is kind of heavy, it's falling. Okay. Right here. Another one right here. Mm hmm. Okay, now, moving forward, I am going to, this is the first one, this is the second one, and from here, I am moving forward again to the next point. And maybe a little bit more. and have another one right here. Oops. Can they see it? Okay, yeah. And as you can see, I started having flares starting from here forward to my sides and another one and spreading again the keep 
keeping the flares up. I have to pull this up. When I pull this up, I need to make a little, yeah, this and pin it. I need to pull the other ones too. It's heavy fabric right now. It's kind of pulling it down because I did not use a muslin. <laughs> I wanted to have some kind of a fabric that shows the draping nicely. Mm -hmm. Let me see. I needed more fabric for this, this amount of flare. <laughs> From here. I need to create another one, which became a little short. Okay. But it doesn't matter because we will add that piece to our pattern piece and another one right here in here and at the center back maybe create another one that's going to be a lot of flare for this skirt Maybe the center back, another one. Yes, okay. So, let me cut this area. Get it your arms. Can you pull it a little back so they can see? Sorry about that. This area needed a little extra fabric. I couldn't value, you know, I couldn't measure that, but I will correct it on the pattern. Basically, but the front lays flat straight on the body and the flare starts just from here a little bit and it starts adding lots of flare on the sides of the body toward back and when you see here let's say this is lots of fabric goes all the way down so lots of flare toward the back and on the side without gathering around the waist. So this way, it means that you are not adding any fullness around the waist, but you are adding fullness around the lower from the sides to all the way back. This is especially very nice for the people who are more flat in the back and they like little bit of uh, volume at the back of their skirt and the back of their body uh, and from starting from the sides. So this way, how do you like this look? Let me see. Questions, I can't see this question. So there's a question in here did you start with a rectangle piece on this demo and you recorded demo? I noticed the base of the skirt went into a diamond base. 
did you start with a rectangle piece? Yes, I mean, I started with a rectangle piece, but uh, I laid the center front on the uh, straight grain. And on this demo, the demo that I showed, right? Yes, I will show you um, because I'm going to take this on the flat uh, surface going to show you and where hits where and what to do, okay? If the dress form didn't have a flat front, no tummy. Then there would be flare in front too. Like if she had a little tummy in the front, well, no, still would be straight, but the tummy would stick out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, the way that you uh, place the fabric on the dress form or on your body, the grain are coming straight. If you have a tummy in here, it's not going to create a flat uh, flare. On the contrary, it's still going to be straight. But if the tummy is big, it's going to stick out. So when you have a bigger tummy, for example, if somebody or customer or client have a bigger tummy and you want to disguise it, then you don't want to do the straight or you have to just line it and put a spanks on her, right? Or you add a flare at the front as well. Or you can create the flare starting from closer to the center front and keep the front little straight. That kind of disguise it as well. But then you have to create extra flare or maybe gathering from the sides. That won't do. This kind of a flare skirt are not have a gathering at all, uh, which means still very flattering. But from the down, but as long as it goes longer, the flare starts to come down. The bottom of the skirt gets bigger and the front stays uh, straight. Do you know when this is nicer? When you have a, some kind of a beautiful pattern of the fabric, like a flower or something that you want to clearly see the pattern shape or uh, stripe fabric, straight stripe. The front would come stri stri uh, straight and from here it will start to have a diagonal look. It will create a very interesting design as well. And or just the simple basic fabric like this one from the front when you see it it's kind of looks still like an a line but it has lots of flares still going on especially starting from the sides to the back so this would suit my flat bum good to know e uh, yes it will suit my flat bum as well, but I do have a tummy, so I cannot wear any <laughs> circle skirt. So I do have a wrong side of the flare. Uh, thank you. You answered my next question about bigger bellies. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to take this. Before I take this, I have to make some marks. So the marks, I am doing the mark of the waist line and the first flare point and the second one and oh this is a little dropped okay it's fine yeah waist continues and the waist continues to here to here so the side seam you need to brush your hand and see if this, the side seam is exactly right here. I can't feel it, so I am going to just close to my, uh, the, where this flare starts. And this is the center front. This is my side seam SS. And this is my center back. But the center back, I haven't decided yet if I want to create another flare, which will go to my center back. This might be, 
might be straighten it actually so it's on the straight grain and if I want to create a pleat at the back I can do that to create a little extra you know at the center back you want it to end it at the straight grain or cross grain not the not the bias because that stretches out and it will be kind of uh, hard it, this is straight grain but you still want to create a little extra you know flare or the kind of a fullness then at here you can just basically have one big chunk of pleat that will create a nice just at the back that's the only place you can have it if you want to come to the straight grain at the back and still have the fullness in the back this way you will have this Okay, do you see that? So now I can draw my center back. This is where it hits my center back. And center back, okay? Now I need to make waist and show where is my pleat. Why I did the add the pleat and this is the pleat and... Okay. Now, I'm going to take it to the, I'm going to take it away from the, take it off the, the rest form and put it on a, I came a little late, so I'm ha I have missed, did you pin cut the folds and waistline by eye? I kind of made the marks on the dress form, but you can do it by eye too if you want to, if you know where exactly you want to create your flare. And it can be little, you know, half a centimeter, not exactly that, that's fine. But overall, you're creating, wherever you're creating the flare, you can eye it or you can have a little uh, reference point on the dress form if you like. Okay, now I'm going to take it off and you see it. And then I'm going to talk about the half circle, full circle, on the table. Okay. Yeah. So, if you see, this is as you saw, is half circle because this one going to be long right don't look at this as a short because I didn't have enough fabric this is supposed to be longer let me take this stuff so I can pull it so Whatever your front length is, let's say you want a length to 60 centimeters, okay? Or, you know, uh, 25 inches or so, you have to add from this side 25 inches down as well. Let's say you don't have enough fabric to do so, right? You can actually cut here separate it have the front piece from the side seam in a different fabric and add this from different fabric as well that's why we added our side seam but if you do not want to have a side seam even though the side seam might disguise and in, into the seam not going to be in the fold it's not going to show that much but overall this is half circle but do you see the waist how it is actually looks so when you are doing the half circle or full circle skirt, let me show it on the paper, Josh. Mm. 
I'm going to bring a paper so I can design it and show it to you guys. <laughs> I need a yeah, I need a straight just paper without the line or anything, Josh. Do you see this is not very regular half circle waist look? First, let me show you, talk about the, what is the half circle, what is the full circle, and how you cut the waist around it. Can you make it a little closer? So they can see it. Book of Mhm. Çok az aşağı inersen olur. Tamam. This is a little better, I think. Okay. Now. Now, guys. So, half circle skirts. Lost sound. Leia posted her Charlie dress. You can look at her here. Which one's the one with Eve? Yo, no, you can't hear me? Which one's the one with Eve? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you answer if you. Guys, can you hear me? Because somebody said. Okay, okay, cool. So half circle skirt I need darker bigger pen so they can see it So to make the half circle skirt So let's say this is your fabric. I'm just giving you a doing the study of it, okay? So it's easier to maybe to understand for people who have little. And this is my version of making this. There are ways, everyone has a different way. So this is a uh, cross grain. That's how I do my uh, half circle skirt. Yeah. This is straight grain, which is your salvage, right? And for the half circle skirt, so I usually, let's do it with the pencil, I usually do regular half circle. I kind of cut my waist, whatever is my waist circumference. Let's say my waist circumference is like 25 inches. I cut about like, cut 25 inches around here little less because sometimes it stretches around the bias somewhere around like 24 and a half around here and this part stays on the center back it turns around and comes to the center back and i kind of make this circular right so this is how i fast cut my circle half circle skirts the front the center front is here which falls onto my cross grain so that's good it's not going to stretch this area is on bias that will create a nice and all of these are actually biased the the uh, uh, true bias is right here which creates a beautiful drape usually falls on your side seam so basically 
This is the easiest way I do to make a half circle on the body with a very flat fabric, okay? Without making it hard or making a, uh, bringing a math into it. I'm just, this is, this is the easiest way for me to do this. And you can have this, double it, if you want a circle skirt, you do the same thing again, double this look, this time you divide the waist into two Right, so make this one little smaller and 25 divide in two and then you will have a circle skirt. But, so since you need a seam, I mean the zipper or something, if you are not gathering at all, so you're not going to be elastic or anything, so you want to have a zipper in the back if you want the zipper in the back you are not cutting here no cut but on this one the cut in the middle as well so this way you will have three pieces one piece on the fold you fold it or you don't fold it you just cut this uh, symmetrically and you do not give any uh, seam at the front and at the back you put center back seam and this are side seam okay and you will have side seam and the center back seam if you want to have a back seam with the zipper or anything is that clear So this is a basic circle skirt with the four, three pieces. Sometimes you just want to have one piece and no, just only one seam, which I did a lot with my tool skirt. So I don't have seams around my skirt. I usually go by very uh, wide tools. And I make circle skirt out of the full. So what does it, so there is no seam, only a, one seam at the center back. If I want to, you don't even have to, you maybe just cut for the zipper and. So basically, this is again your uh, straight grain, your cross grain. So this is the, where the fabric you cut. And this is where you add your uh, waist in the middle, right? And the, this is, has to be like that, in the middle of your fabric. So this is the waist of your circle and this is all around your skirt. This is a full, uh, full circle without any seam. And the easiest way for me to do this, honestly, I just fold my fabric into four and divide my waist into four and I just make a little, like if my uh, waist is uh, right, uh, 24, like this has to be six inches so I bring my ruler it's bendy right so I at the fold of my fabric if this is fold in four in here I just measure six six inches okay let me see where is the six okay six and I bend it make the pie 
slice in six, divide it, and make a mark. And I just make a mark, mark, and then I draw my full circle skirt without seam and I just cut this and it's exactly around my waist area. Now, why I talk to, uh, talked about this? Because I'm telling you this, without uh, controlling your flare, when you do that, you are basically dividing all your flare automatically same all around the body. Same thing in here as well, because you are making a very uh, regular half circle at the front and the back. But when you have the control flare skirt, you'll see the waist is not half circle-ish at all, or, you know, it doesn't look like it is divided equally. Do you see this waist? Do you see? Look at this. This doesn't look like a half circle anything. Oh, let me, Josh is gonna pull back. Yeah, okay, we're good. We're good, Josh, don't worry. You're good, Josh. Because we played with our flare. We played with our flare and I started all my flare from here forward, like from here first, first here, and then back. So I controlled it. That's why this looks weird in here. It doesn't look half circle that is divided into all the flares all around it. Is that clear for you guys? Now, I have a question I can see in here. Let me look at the question. Um, if you want ballroom length, but the fabric is not, not wide enough, do you have to make four pieces? Uh, depends on the width of the... Hi. <laughs> uh, depends on the... Wow, I am like very shiny. Okay, not good. Depends on the fabric width length and whatever you make the pattern and you see where you are you have to add the grain of the fabric where is your uh, side seam where is your straight where is your uh, center back where is your center front you have to make it on the uh, this fabric piece and you show where is your straight grain and where is your cross grain on the fabric as well. And then when you place it on the paper, you make all these marks. Then after that, you have a clear uh, direction of how to cut your fabric. Uh, for example, I'm going to show it from top. For example, as I said, let's say I just want to have my fabric different color. Like from here, I want a pattern, something, and from here, I want another color, something. This is my side seam, and I want to cut from there. I, you know, you basically make the mark on the dress form, and this is on bias. This is my center front is on my... Uh, salvage which I can fold it on any place and place it and cut this piece from here you can divide it if you wish to right so you make the mark when it's on the dress form if you have that problem and you know your fabric is not wide enough and then you make the mark let's say on the dress form you made a mark that from here you want another piece as well okay and you make the mark as long as you have your 
straight grain and the cross grain very clear. When you place it on the fabric, this is how you're going to place it on the fabric and then you'll be fine. As long as your other fabric as well is on the same grain, you're not going to have a wobbly and ugly seam. It's going to be okay. But if your seam, again, falls into uh, bias, you have to just uh, be a little careful when you sew it together. With the walking foot and everything, just make it sure it is not stretching. And as long as you hang your skirt before you cut the hem for 12 hours or 24 hours, you know, that's enough. You hang the skirt, especially if the fabric is a little heavy side, you want to hang it for longer. So it drops all the stretch. And then at the end, you finish the hem. Okay, sounds good. And that's clear, great, great. So how do you determine skirt length for cutting? Uh, you decide the length of the skirt, where you want to, you from your waist to your knee or below the knee, you measure yourself first. You have the clear, where is your waist, where is your center front, and where is your side seam, and where is your center back. You can just measure it, and if you want to hang it, you just add maybe one inch extra and cut it, and then hang it, and wait till it's all released, uh, all the stretch, and then at the end, you can lay it flat again on the dress, on the table, and measure it and cut. Okay, so for example, so like if your, you basically have to measure it on your body, your side seam on your body, you measure it where you want to end. Let's say you want the skirt for uh, 70 centimeters or somewhere around 30 inches right you measure it at the front from your waist to center front that much and from the side seam you measure it where what is whatever it is your usually from the front center front and the side are same at the back I usually give one inch extra if you have a little curvier uh, hip but you can measure with your measuring tape on your body and then transfer it here so side seam and then your center back, you measure it from here as well. And then at the bottom, you, how you curve it, let me show. So for example, you have a half a circle skirt and your uh, center back seam from your, this is your waist and the center back is about 25 inches, 25, this is how you do. And this part stays on your center front and your center front maybe is 24 and then you go down 24 and you mark it. You better have your side seam as well. It's usually between 24 and 25. Let's say it's 24 and a half. Yeah, I am doing it just not perfectly well. So you, but putting the numbers. And from 24, this is how you do it. You slowly from here, putting your measuring tape on the angle, not staying at the center front and doing it. Like each time you divide here in three, for example, and you go on angle. And you start with the 24. 
and then you slightly go to 24 and 3, I don't know, quarter. <laughs> and then slowly to like to half. And then you start creating little equal. And to 25, you again, again, you place your big ruler like this or your measuring tape. You have to keep it straight. And slowly go up the number to 22. You hit the 25. Each time you put a pin right there and then you slowly make the mark with your or with the pins and then that's how you cut it. That's how you have the perfect, uh, you know, half circle to that goes. If you do the 20 back at the same amount at the front, if your front is flat and you have a little bumpy hip, that's going to pull up. You don't want to do that. You want to add a little bit extra toward the back and a little bit on the side so it gradually goes uh, higher, right? Okay. I think that's clear, I hope. And uh, we came to the end of our session. It's been two hours. I hope you enjoyed this session. And if you have any question, let me know. And uh, you will have the videos up on the Draping Society anytime you want to come and watch. And some, for some people, it is like in the middle of the midnight and they want to watch it later. And it will be there with the demo and with the session, with the draping and the pattern making. Huh? Yes, we do this kind of uh, demos and in Draping Society. Uh, like every almost every week or something and whenever we have some kind of a project and it's wants a variation people want the variation we create a variation on the demos and from there they can you know apply their own look to the design but uh, we usually have every dresses or project from A to Z from the design to finishing everything detailed videos You're welcome. Let me see if there is a question. That's clear. So how do you determine skirt length for cutting? I just answered this. Okay, I just saw it. Isn't the draped waist isn't circular? Can you still do this? Do it this way? The draped waist? I don't understand. The draped waist isn't circular. Can you still do it this way? Yeah, you still can, as long as you have all your, uh, you know, okay, about that, let me just. You mean this, right? So since this is not circular, right? So she's asking how you can determine the length equally. That's a good question. Let's find out. Find out. <laughs> uh, you know, this has to flat. So you know the front and you know the center back, you know the side seam, okay? At this point, if you want to create that kind of a look, you can measure from your back princess line of your waist to the skirt, end of the skirt, and decide how much you want. And you make the mark on your, this is my princess, princess at the front. This is my princess at the front. Princess, okay? The princess line of the front, princess line of the back, and this is the center back. This is my side seam. And again, you mark it. When you mark it, you usually, like, the, probably the, this skirt, bottom it, it's not going to be circular. Since this skirt is kind of like 
weird shape, right? Like that. The, the probably the, this is going to be kind of like this, like this. So this area will be a little bit weird looking. But you need your center front, you need center back, you need your side seam uh, measurements of the skirt that you want. Okay, you like if this, the, the skirt is all around 25 inches or something and the back maybe a little bit, you basically from here, from this area, let's say all around is 25. So I place my big ruler. I follow my waist, 25, 25, 25, and I go 25, whatever it is, all around it has to be 25, so I just follow my waist. The waist is your indication of your measuring. You just, instead of circle that you go, this one is kind of like this, you go, like you have to do it going from your waist. Doesn't matter. You follow your waistline. <laughs> is it, are they talking more a line? A line skirt? Are they talking? It's a new, some, I think, okay, anyway. That makes sense, right? Yes. You're welcome. And you're welcome, guys. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. You are full of information. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Uh, okay, there's some question in here. What about the first flare skirt? What is the first? Are you going to cut the bottom of the first flare skirt of the draping or just leave it as it is draping? I don't understand the question. Can you give me a little bit more? Oh, the first, oh, the, the, the first demo, you mean? Are you going to cut the bottom of the first flare skirt of the draping demo? Maybe, I don't, I don't know, answer, you know, uh, give, give me a little more uh, question, make it a little more clear. Okay, the first demo, am I going to cut it? If you want to, yes, you can apply this to any kind of a, a draped flare skirt that you want. You know, you can cut it from wherever you want. I don't, uh, I didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. Can you just? The video, it dipped where the flares were. Hmm? I don't understand that. I'm sorry. Give me. On the what? On the skirt? It doesn't matter if we are turning it into a pattern and on the pattern we're going to clean everything up because when we are draping on the dress form obviously the fabric is not going to be clean because it's rectangular right we take this to the pattern making we take it to the paper and transfer all the information to the paper and then we clean it the pattern and after we clean the pattern then we put it on a fabric and cut it and it's then it's straight um, that's what Josh says me, that's what, from his understanding. No, if you do the handkerchief style, that's going to be a handkerchief looking uh, hem. If you want the round hem, you have to turn it into the dress, you know, on the pattern, make it a clean, you know, uh, clean the bottom, uh, all equally uh, the length. The handkerchief, you can have a circle, uh, you know, circular around the body, but at the bottom, if you don't leave it, it's going to look like a handkerchief style. Yes. 
Yeah, during the draping, you cannot control the bottom of it, and I didn't cut the bottom of it at all on the dress form. You can if you want to, but I rather to turn it into a turn it, put it on the uh, pattern paper and do it on there because I cannot control the length that easily on the dress form. I do it myself, I do it sometimes, but to do it properly, you have to turn it into a pattern. Okay, now I wanna show something before I say goodbye. Look at her, Leah! Oh my God, girl. <laughs> Look at that her, loving my Charlie dress, made it so I can rock it long and short. Definitely channeling terrifical holidays vibes. <laughs> Girl, you're my best model ever. Look at her. Beautiful. And look at the draping here. I don't know if you can see it, guys, but the fabric is little. But look at the drapes, how it pulls down. It's beautiful. I love the Charlie dress on you, love. Do you see? This is not gathered around the here. Okay? So that's why it's beautifully draping. And it fits you perfect, Leah. I'm so glad that you've done this. Great, great job. Yay, I'm so happy to see it more. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Uh... <laughs> Please come and say it yourself. I'm not doing the, I'm not uh, what, what, advertising my work. I am just, I'm just a teacher. Come here. <laughs> Registrations are now open. The website is www.drapingsociety.com. Um, yeah, we were closed for a long time, but we're ready to launch to the public. So if you want to join us weekly like this, that's the address. Okay, Josh took it out of his system and he did the advertising, so we're good. <laughs> okay, guys, love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this session. I enjoyed it. And have a great weekend. And see you soon. Bye.